these people know more, 10 times more than I know and, and, and have, have been poured with so much knowledge more than what I have because I spend my time executing. You know, I don't spend a whole lot of time working on personal development. My personal development is, can I, can I outdo what Ricky did yesterday? If you equate it down to the number of dollars you're going to make, you know, then sure, there's some guys out there that, that are ahead of me, right? But at the end of the day, um, I even think some people that make way more money than me in the coaching, in the real estate coaching space, have a lot less love than I have in the real estate industry, right? I think if somebody did a poll, it would say bing, right? It would be very um, lopsided, let's just say. And I've already seen some polls that were kind of like that. And it's nothing to say, oh, I'm the greatest, I'm the best. I'm one of the hum most humblest guys you'll ever meet. I, nobody even knew I was a number one Remax agent in Alabama for like three or four years because I was just a real real estate agent, right? It wasn't until I started trying to coach, that's the only reason I ever said anything about it was because I was trying to give credibility to myself, to the industry, that I know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, nobody would even know I sold 100 properties a year or anything because I wouldn't be telling anybody because I don't care what other people think. So at the end of the day, you know, it's not about, oh, Ricky's so great. It's about how many people am I impacting? You know, how many people uh, lives are really changing? You know, as far as being giving everything away for free, it all just comes back to, okay, if I want to reduce the failure rate in the industry, okay, the whole industry, which is 25 million agents, let's say worldwide, okay, then, then it, you know, if, 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 people, if people walk into the door of Ricky and love what he does, love what they see from the front of the house, walk in and realize, wait, there's an admission charge to get in here, they're just gonna turn around around, a lot of them are gonna turn right around and go to another house, right? Because that, that, let's face it, real estate agents are cheap, right? <laughs> like, at the end of the day, um, I, I'm one of them, right? I mean, I didn't want to pay for coaching, okay? So I get it, you know, I don't want to, and plus, the, here's the thing, all the coaching out there is garbage. No, 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 I'm sorry, not all the coaching is garbage. A lot of the coaching is garbage that they're charging all this crazy amounts of money for. And I look at the program and I'm like, oh my gosh. So there's a lot of things that motivated me to go this route. But it all came from the way I built my real estate business in the first place. When I switched from deals to actually focusing on people and seeing what I could do to help people and offering free information. Like I would send a weekly email that I still send. I've sent every Wednesday since 2007 with all the closed sales on it. By the way, he was a huge influence on me for like starting, because I started following him when I started coaching. And then he kind of influenced me to like, I'm like, why don't I do all this for free? You know, and that's when things really blew up. But when you can build a brand and you actually have an audience behind you of people who love you, that you brought value to their life, you can build so many different businesses. You know, look at what Gary's doing. He's probably gonna do 100 million off his NFT project he just did, where he's literally selling digital pieces of art for ad admissions into his conference and to come see him. I bought one. I bought one to do five minute, fa five minute FaceTime with him uh, once a year for three years. You know what I mean? Like I spent eleven thousand dollars. So, yeah, man, that it's 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 like free is the business model of the future. You know, and I'll tell you a lot of things that I learned through that process and reading all those books and watching and thinking about how everything went down and trying to piece it all together. You know, outside of the things I did wrong, what I realized is that, you know, when you go through a moment like that, of course, I was in my mid-20s and there were guys that were 40 and 50 and even in their 60s that were, went through the same exact thing. Here I was in my mid-20s going through what they were going through in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I was like, wow, how fortunate am I? Now, I wasn't worried about it. I was still in my 20s. Like, I could still go out till 7 in the morning, wake up at 8 o'clock, go roof houses, feel fine. Like, I was still in that, in that you know, time frame of my life. So, it wasn't a big deal to me. I didn't have a family. I didn't have any bills. I was in a very... Uh, I was very blessed to be honest. I mean, I, and I knew it at the time. I was like, you know, this is this is incredible for this to happen to me right now. Um, subconsciously, not not on the front end. I wasn't thinking that. I wasn't telling everybody like, thank God, you know, or anything. But definitely not that was definitely. But I definitely knew that on the inside. And uh, a couple things I realized when you go through something like that, it makes you realize a lot of things about business. 
Okay, and one of the biggest things I realized was that regardless of any market conditions, because that was the worst real estate crash that we've ever seen in our life, because I'm Ricky Carruth, right? I, I have DNA in me that, that, that will not stop. You know, I mean, there's, everybody has excuses. You know, I hear them all day long. You know, everybody has excuses. Oh, inventory's down, or it's too hard, or you know, you know, last year the shutdowns. I hear, I hear it all all day long, and you know, like I said from the beginning, 90% of agents don't make it in this business, right? And if you're making any kind of excuse whatsoever, what side of that do you think you're part of the 10% or part of the 90%? You know what I mean? What part of that statistic are you going to fall under at the end of the day? You know, you, you've got to be in the top 10% just to squeeze, just to barely make it. Not to be like a millionaire, but just to barely be an average agent that barely squeezes by. you got to be in the top 10%. So if you're making excuses, you know, and you're going to quit after three months of making calls and you haven't sold a property yet, and that, and that makes you want to quit, then you need to go ahead and quit. You know what I mean? And go back to doing whatever you were trying to do. So, you know, the power of words, right, it, it is so powerful. Um, you know, podcasts and books can really alter the trajectory of your life. You know, and people sit around, they don't read, they don't listen to podcasts, they don't this, they, if they are listening to podcasts, they're not really taking anything out, they're just listening to listen. There's these habitual, you know, seminar goies and podcast listeners and stuff, and they know every, they know more than I know. These people know more, 10 times more than I know, and, and, and have, have been poured with so much knowledge, more than what I have, because I spend my time executing. You know, I don't spend a whole lot of time working on personal development. My personal development is, can I, can I outdo what Ricky did yesterday? You know, and can I outdo tomorrow what I'm doing today? That's my personal growth. But a lot of people, they go to seminars, they go, they listen to these podcasts, and they never do anything, you know? And, and, and so there, there's a line you have to draw. You know, I mean, I, I know guys are like, oh, I'm reading this book, I'm reading that book. They call me, they ask me all this stuff. And I'm like, listen, here's my advice to you. Stop reading books. If you've got some kind of weird thing going on, they can hear that and sense that and it throws red flags. And so it's trial and error, man. Like I, I went through, you know, a decade and a half of making calls, uh, you know, and trial and error and trying to figure out, okay, now what is the script that, that, I, can, that I can utilize because like all the scripts out there, all the mainstream coaches are 1980s, throw it in the garbage, light it on fire scripts, okay? Do you want to buy or sell? Do you know anybody that wants to buy or sell? What if I could do this, would you then sell, right? It's like, hey, Mr. Seller, you don't know me, I don't know you, but will you sell your house so I can make some money? And if not, give me all your friends and family's information. Maybe they can sell the house so I can make some money. It's all about the agent making money. Right, and it's driving agents' business in the ground. So what I'm trying to do is 180 that situation, and, and instead of trying, instead of the agent trying to figure out what the client can do for the agent, you know, I want to make it. I want to create this this scenario where we're trying to figure out what the agent can do for the client, and we're trying to communicate that to our clients. So this is much deeper than just a script. This is an entire philosophy, right? Stacked on top of two decades of, of trial and error and trying to figure out how to help the industry. You know, like when I say I want to reduce the failure rate, this is real. I'm literally trying to figure out how to help agents communicate, try to get to them before the, the mainstream coaches get to them, you know, to teach them that that's garbage, all right? And this is how you do it. You call people and see what you can do to help them. Not see if they want to buy or sell a house, but to let them know who you are, what you do, and you're here to help. You know, 10 years, that's a long way out. That's like, who knows? But, you know, maybe on Mars or something, I'll be doing conferences on Mars. Like, Elon will be there. I'll be like, you know, hey, buddy, like, come on up, you know, let's welcome him up. But I, um, let's just talk about, like, I don't know, five years out, okay? Five years out, um, you know, money is just not even a like a worry at that point. Um, and literally I, w the way I feel is I feel like, like when I, like my retirement year years type deal is going to be me traveling, kite surfing the world. That's my thing. Kite surfing and snowboarding is my thing. And, you know, watching my daughter grow up, helping her learn how to kite surf and snowboard and stuff, of course. But as far as business goes, um, you know, spend a lot of time with the family and stuff at that point. I mean, heck dude, like in five years, she's going to be six, something like that. Like, 
I mean, I'm, I'm going to have like, I'm going to be in the best years of her life, of her young life, really with no responsibilities on the work end, being able to so much flexibility. It's just, I can't even like, it's like a, I'm still trying to digest how incredible that's going to be. But, um, you know, right now, like I'm setting up events all over the country right now. Right. And I'm also planning on doing South Africa cause I have a team there next, uh, uh, next uh, fall and you know I want to do a West Coast tour like I want to do all this stuff but at the end of the day like once this brand even goes to these higher levels and I you know get to this place that I want to get to over the next five years I could literally do one conference a year you know one zero to diamond conference a year in Vegas or something like that um, and let everybody come in you know, and uh, and really just travel travel the world and continue to push out content. There's there's people that are being born right now, okay, <laughs> that are going to become real estate agents in 20 years, all right. And my content's still going to be there, right? And I'm still going to be pushing out content. They're going to see a video just by chance, you know. And it's going to they're going to they're going to draw them in. And then they're going to go back 20 years and start looking at some videos of today, you know. And it's just going to inspire them to go to so many so many higher levels than ever even thought was possible. So. So for me, it's all about impact at that point. You know what I mean? And and I, I, I you know, who knows? Who knows, man? I'm just I'm, I'm just I'm gonna keep pushing till, and I'll know when it's right to make the right moves and do what I'm trying to do. But I'm um, just enjoying the ride right now because it's a lot of work. A lot of people say, "Well, it must be nice to be you." Yeah. Like it is nice to be me, you know what I'm saying? Because I can handle all this stuff. But, you know, let's let anybody walk through this door and sit right here for an hour and see what actually has to go through this brain and to compute everything that's happening on a day to day to week to week to a minute to minute basis, right? And be able to juggle all this stuff and keep it all level headed, you know, and, and make everything, you know, seem so, you know, so easy. And that, and that brings me back to, to the same point, man. Successful people. They make it seem easy because they've got simple process.